expertise and knowledge that everyone has to offer around the table, and as well how equal it is, how, how everyone does feel that they can say what they need to say, um, and that everyone's opinion is valued equally whether, when you're on a committee together. I feel like it's fairly flat, which is nice. Um, in my day job, I work on, with a number of different agricultural organizations, and I wouldn't say that's always true. Um, so I think that's something to be celebrated, and it's something that we have as a real strength. Um, the other thing that I've seen, um, I'm involved with a national um, uh, surveillance network that's being put together that Western Canada helped to support this year, um, putting together an equine uh, part of surveillance. So looking at how do we work better to share disease information across Canada, so between all the provinces, between government and uh, provincial support organizations. And we put together a workshop in fairly short order. Um, and I think that the, the strength of it when compared with other organizations in agriculture, that most of those other organizations are fighting and not willing to put up their hand to help. But the interesting thing with the equine sector is that it's moving forward in that, in that one particular area um, because everybody can get behind that one goal of we don't want to have um, disease in horses and we want to be able to share that information more um, quickly and a little bit more efficiently. So we've been able to find a way to get behind a goal and work towards that and where other organizations, so swine and poultry and bovine, they've all struggled and had problems and they're not moving forward. Um, the other groups are looking to us for the answers, which is really interesting and kind of inspiring to see. The other part is that our, our organization put forward money to, to be able to leverage and get, and get that thing moving, which is more than I can say for any of those other large organizations who waited for government to give them a handout. Um, so I think those are really positive things that we've seen um, from the health and welfare side of things. Um, and I see that around the room here, people are willing to help. Um, and maybe the question that we need to ask is, what expertise and um, what expertise do you have to offer, and what are you willing to provide? Um, we have around this around this room again because we have so many people are involved in horses as part of their life. It's not their whole life. You're not like a dairy farmer where that's all you ever do. Um, you probably have a day job, a cardiologist, or some other way, wonderful way to pay for horses. <laughs> Think about it. Um, so we have all this expertise. So what is it that you have to put forward to help move things forward? And um, the other question is making sure that our organization is willing to listen. And I, I do hope that's, I hope that's true. My turn. Um, I come from uh, also a job that I went into, so I have money to pay for my horses. I'm a lawyer. Uh, I predominantly deal with systems management and information management in major murder cases. So don't anybody kill me if I'm involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought this morning was really interesting, and I, I'm not going to repeat everything my colleagues here have said, because, but I do agree with it. it. It's wonderful seeing such a large group of knowledgeable people who are willing to give their time to something I love, horses and the equine industry. Um, I thought it was a very productive morning in the sense that people did get to voice their concerns and voice their views and uh, share a common vision for going forward, which is you know, we need to communicate and actually get things done. I'm a get or done kind of gal. Uh, I can tell you from my personal experience that nothing I heard this morning from, from Eva was a surprise to me. I joined the National Stewards Committee about a decade ago for a very small purpose. The spelling errors in the stewards report made me crazy. <laughs> it took me seven years to get those things. <laughs> and with the new system, the new organization, I actually am able to get things done in a, in a great hurry with great cooperation. You know, a concrete example, the person responsible rule changed. The day before. So I emailed the office oh, and uh, sent a follow up. Hey, have you guys ever thought of doing an official communication like the FBI does? The answer was, well, you should ask. It was the draft I did yesterday. So I, I really do think that the intentions are very good. Progress is being made. Uh, some things have been done that have made me crazy and, and you know, cost me work and time. But, the intentions have all been good moving forward. And I think the intentions of everyone in this room and everyone back in Ottawa in the office are the same. Let's, let's move forward and get it in. Um, so I guess I probably am not going to sugarcoat it as much as everybody else has. <laughs> I don't mean that with any disrespect. Um, even though I am paying 
staffers claim a volunteer for another organization that has nothing to do with horses. So I understand both roles, to be quite honest. Um, I felt uh, today was good. I enjoyed a lot of the conversation, a lot of the points that came across. Um, it is things we have talked about before. And I am of a firm believer that if we are actually going to make change, because I believe in a lot of people's eyes right now that we are not doing a good job and people are not happy. And we need to do something to change that. And people that need to get on the same page and choose one, two, three things, not a hundred, I said this earlier today, um, and a lot of people actually, when I heard people talking today, it sounded like there were some commonalities that we could choose to move forward, but something has to get done. Like, we keep talking about it all the time. The bylaws changed, that's great, whatever, let's get on with it. That happened a few years ago, right? It doesn't take really that long to get your governance in order. Um, a little bit of history with the AEF. When I first started there 10 years ago, it was 50 people on our board of directors. So I can sort of get where we came from with a lot of people um, trying to get the job done from an operational perspective. But if we all come together and put on our hats and say, why are we here? Who are we here for? You know, you've got to take off your hat at the door, not be here for yourself. And I do that on the board that I volunteer on. And look at all these people you know, we've got 100,000 people that we look after in Canada. What do they want? What do they need? And what can we deliver to them? Instead of just keep talking about things or hashing things out. You know, the, negativ the negativity has to go away and we need to do something now, today. Say we're gonna do, even if it's one thing, and this is what we're gonna do and we're gonna have it done, by January 2018 and we're gonna roll that out and we're gonna tell everybody about it together. You know, we're gonna share that information and we're gonna be proud of it. That is how I feel um, and I want to be a part of that and I want it to be successful. We've come a long way with our own organization. I know, we have a very small staff, we have almost 20,000 members. We are not going to make everybody happy, but we can be accountable to those people. We set five goals probably I don't know, 2014, Kara, and, and we stick to the same five goals. Increased membership, you know, added benefits to the program. We don't create new programs. We focus on what we have and we do a good job at it. We, you have to understand what you can do with when, what you have, but everybody should matter and we have to take those considerations, um, or we have to take that into consideration, but understand we won't make everybody happy, but we have to focus on the same goals and get something. Could I invite the panel to respond to those last comments? I think if I can respond, I think it's helpful if you can, I agree with you that we have to focus on a few small things, a few, a few things that everybody can agree on. Um, like obviously, I think each of us has an organization that we work with or that we, you know, that we have our own kind of group that we have to answer to or a part of or a tribe that we feel part of. Um, but if there are overriding things that you think we could all get behind, like, can we all get, can we all agree that we need to increase participation in equine sport? Can we all agree that we want horse welfare to be upheld? Can we all agree that we, you know, whatever those things might be, if we can pick a few top things, then I think you're right. But we have to find those things and then find a way that each of us can contribute to that greater goal while meeting our own group's needs. And I think that's <coughs> so if you can do something, if you can find something that you can put forward that would be helpful that, um, that also meets your needs. That would be, that's, 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 I think that's an effective way to kind of have this big national multifaceted group work together. Someone else on the panel? Yeah. I'll go ahead. I think the, the transition from ideas of governance to operations and implementation of new ideas is something that we struggle with. And I can only speak from within eventing, really. There was a moment this spring where something needed to happen. Simply put on a high performance clinic. In the end, we want the best riders that we have and the best horses that we have, and we speak in terms of high performance. And we can talk a lot about it, but until you actually achieve certain results or see your riders competing in certain competitions, 
talk all you want with you. There, there has to be some sort of, that is what, when you say you have to do something, that is what we have to be working towards. And so we did, we did take that action. I, I feel personally within the organization currently with the opportunities are there to take action if needed. And I think there is the support from the organization to do that. There has to be that that energy and the, the somehow the, you have to know what it is that you want to do to be able to do it. But I think the opportunities are there. If we need to do something out of this out of this meeting today, I, I'd be open to ideas and certainly support them. Again, we just have to make sure that we're not trying to operate governments. If, if the governance is there, what is it that we're going to do? That's where some of these uh, big terms I think are hard to. It's hard to show communication. It's hard to demonstrate communication or change your communication strategy or to demonstrate transparency or demonstrate trust. Those things take time. And I think that we're committed to it. We've spoken to it. And if we're going to show that that's the case, it's only going to be 18 months from now that the membership comes back and says, wow, things are different. This is the organization that I want to be a part of. And it's going to be hard to show people the future. We can be committed to it. We decide that those are the most important things, then we're going to have to decide how we're going to measure it. And how will we then know that we've achieved the result that we set up to achieve? And if we haven't, then we have to, we have to change that and alter it mid, midstream to ensure that we still do. Uh, I guess the question of what we want to show and who it is that we want to show it to, again, none of us are here because we want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. We can't do that. But I also think that the steps that have been taken already will ensure that the same things are not going to occur over and over again. Uh, I would hope that the experience this year is different than it was a year ago. I hope that we have more things that we can show that the experience that people have interacting with you see is different than it was. And if it's not, then I think that I'd love to know why it isn't, which groups are finding that it's not, so that we can work together collaboratively to ensure that all are having the same experience that some of us are having in achieving certain results. One of the uh, paradoxes, if you will, that I see here is that I had the benefit of sitting with the board yesterday to see how they think and how they uh, see the, uh, the way forward for the organization. And they understand the issues and the problems that many of you have articulated today very well. Uh, but what strikes me so interesting is that you seem to be waiting for somebody to do something. Um, this is a very large, uh, diverse group with many very different needs. Your staff is a relatively small staff to, if they were to do everything you had on that list of customers and try to create programs for those customers to, to bring them in, uh, you probably need five times the number of staff that you have right now. And um, I don't know why you think you need to wait for, and I haven't checked this out with uh, Eva or uh, Tony or any of the, the board members that are here, but I don't see what stops you if you're out in a discipline province and you have an idea for doing something that you think will enhance the operational efficiency or the, uh, the customer service that you're providing, to come up with a plan, to just get a few of the interested folks together, come up with a plan, send it in so at least the, uh, the, the center group knows what you're doing so they can support it. But I don't think you need to be waiting for somebody else to kind of bless it or take charge of it, because if you do that, it, there's so many things in line that it may be years before your number comes up, whereas you can probably start tomorrow and, and do something. So uh, I think you're in a power group. I haven't heard anything yesterday or today or in my interviews that tells me that you're, you've been disempowered, that somebody says, don't do anything. I, I hear people welcoming the opportunity to support the kinds of things that you may think of doing. And yeah, that may be something you want to you know, give some thought to instead of waiting. Yes? Uh, just a comment on that. Is, uh, because we have a new government that has been in place and there's been lots of challenges with that. Uh, there are blockages for those of us that want to break the things forward. We talked that number one on the list was the transparency in communication. So there are issues. Those uh, blockages, which is extremely 
about the fact that we didn't get it perfect the first time. We probably won't get it perfect the next 50 times. But if it's going dramatically in the wrong direction, and there's a large contingent of our customers, clients, friends, fellow horse lovers that are putting up a protest, you need to recognize that. And I've detected some of that today, and I appreciate that, and I think the rest of the people are too as well. But I think to say we're going along nicely and that don't let governance get in the way, well, governance is in the way at this point. Anybody on our panel? To, to that, I just say, you know, back to my day job again, I mean, with all due respect, even as a cardiologist, I recognize that we're all dying. And so my job as a cardiologist is to, is to recognize that, yes, we're all going to die someday, but to give us every opportunity to react to every bit of information that we get to make sure that it's not today, to give people the quality of life that they want to live on a daily basis, and to not let the medical footprint get in the way of them living their lives. And so I respect and I think to the concerns that jumps brought forward, it's going to make it better for all disciplines. And I certainly wouldn't want you to think that I don't recognize that even in our sport, we've got tremendous sport that lies ahead of us. But I think the concern has been so much that there's just no way that we can do it with our current organization that people are just saying, well, look, it just can't, it can't happen now. Whereas I think it really can happen. I think the, the document that you brought forward was pointing or highlighting or, or giving the, the schematic for, for the way forward was very helpful because I think it then helped a lot of people who were listening very closely to the voice of jump to understand, well, I think they're actually saying that there is a way forward now rather than the fact that everything had to be disassembled. You were saying to them, actually, there is a way forward. And I think a lot of people were then able to understand that though you've had concerns, you were on board to, to do the work that you need to do. There's, there's, there's lots of work that needs to be done. I, I don't want you to think that I'm up here saying everything's great and inventing. I'm just up here saying that look, we, 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 I'd say more than any discipline in the last six to 12 months have come under tremendous scrutiny. Um, and we, we recognize that even when, a, a, when we go through the high performance review for, for tomorrow, and you look back four years, we in essence did what's been highlighted for us to do again. International technical support and leadership and, and, and tending to the owners. And, and these things were done, and yet we recognized that it, it still didn't quite work out. And so we're going to try and do it again, which is basically going to be following the same plan that we had six years ago to put the same things in place to go forward. And, and I think we just have to respect that a lot of it has to do with the people that are in place uh, and the people that are involved in the experiences that we have and we have to continue to respond. So, I think your, you know, the comments and concerns brought forward by Jump have been well received, and I certainly respect them for the great people that are involved and for the great successes that you've had in the sport. Uh, and, and I don't want you to think, just because I sound positive at times, that it's that I don't have great respect for the concerns that you have, and really a lot of the owners that we have in Benchley in, in, in Canada live in Ontario and are close with the Jump community, and they often share the same concerns as the Jump community conversations that they have and, and from the communications that, that circulate. So uh, again, I, I do respect the concerns that are there, and it's only through that that I double down on my commitment to really make a difference so that it is the experience that we want it to be. Just one, uh, I, I want to give credit to where it's due. Uh, the letter that was sent out, uh, the step forward, was a uh, contribution put together by my fellow Category A members, wearing the two hats.
And that's what we need to go back to. Because right now, we do have, we have a board, and we have the three categories of membership, right? Let's define where that is. We know the four pillars of focus are still in place, correct? Right? One Canada, high performance. Everybody has a goal in there, but let's choose the one thing that we're gonna do and work toward that together. So I'm not just saying just pick one thing, real participation, because I think everything is a part of that. Um, and everybody has to be a part of that. But we do need to start somewhere, so you know, the alignment and who is going to be responsible for what, and then let's get it done. We all play a part in that. I would suggest that there are no further governance issues that need to be uh, addressed and massaged and moved forward either. But I, I do agree with Simon that at some point you have to stop the, the 30,000 foot level discussion of you know what should we do, where are we at, and actually start fighting off some doable chunks of things that you get done. Um, if, you, if, we've, if we're able to define who our customers are, then we can certainly, while we do the rest of the, the higher level analysis, start doing some of those smaller level things that, that will still move us forward that we can all agree on. It might be uh, working with uh, Guelph to prepare some material on horse welfare, to, uh, horse welfare that can be distributed through the province. Just making something up there, but any little thing like that that uh, our members can see as value to themselves and to the horse has got, has got to be good. It has got to contribute towards uh, reversing the negativity that's surrounded Equine Canada and Equestrian Canada for the last few years. I mean, but my friends, uh, it doesn't matter whether or not fees increase, they say they think their fees are higher this year. <laughs> they always do. And what am I getting for it? And then I have to explain to them what, what a question of Canada does. So that's perhaps you know, part of the communication piece. We can do a better job of explaining to people that are going to the horse shows what it is we do. As stewards, we're trying to do that as well. I've uh, been working with some of my colleagues to prepare very short little handout materials for people that we can give out at the shows that summarize how to keep the stewards off your back when you're trying to warm your horse up. It, you know, it's a small thing, it doesn't take a lot, but it can move us forward with the, uh, the grassroots folks. So I, I don't know if that's what you were talking about, Sonia, but that's kind of what I'm thinking in my mind. Buy off some little pieces, get those pieces done based on the, the expertise that we have in the room and the interests that people have to move forward, uh, coordinate all that through the office so they know what we're doing, and share it across the country so that everyone uh, that is involved in the Western Canada can partake in whatever wonderful little products we produce. Uh, and I think we'll start changing people's views of what we do. And to speak to that, I think a bigger, a big part about it is that we do somewhat operate in silos. If we don't have to know what eventing, all the great things that eventing is doing, and I think probably some of people are doing these things that need to be done. Every day we're doing these things, like the stewards are out there every day doing, you know, making sure that welfare is upheld. Um, you know, the organizing event organizers are there, they're making sure that their competitors are safe, they're providing for safe footing. Um, Jump Canada is doing a job, doing a great job, of making sure that our athletes are developed and that we've got, you know, everybody is doing their part and they're doing little things, but we're not doing the best job of sharing those things. Um, so we're not doing a good job of sharing what everybody is doing and all these little things that add up to the sum of the, the sum of the little parts. Um, so, and I think that probably develops this kind of lack of trust and lack of knowledge of what are, what the rest of our community is doing. Um, and, it, and it means that we're not necessarily, I guess, maybe leveraging all the good things that we could. So if we knew all of the amazing things that Jumping that jump was doing and all of the amazing things that Aventi was doing or that Para was doing, maybe we would be able to say, that's a good idea, maybe we should try that in this other area. Um, and the other part is that, you know, all of this work that's been going, going into governance and into um, looking at different, uh, different models of, around the world, all of those things, uh, we should maybe be sharing that a little bit more. I know there was a small video that went out, but I think it would be helpful. 
we can sort of open the kimono and show what's behind it and say this is the work that's being done behind the scenes. Here's the consultation process we've gone through um, and share that on a more regular basis so that there's a bit more, there's, so that then there isn't distrust and there isn't this feeling of, I think they're trying to pull a fast one on me here and I'm not really sure what's going on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, it, it is part of a, a communications piece to let people know what we do. And I, I think it was even said, people don't read stuff, so we need to find other ways of getting the information to you. I'm guilty of that, too. Sometimes I read the first line of the email and the rest of it's lost on me. Um, there's other social media ways of getting information out, and I, I think EC is trying to reach some of that some of the other social media to, to get messages in. But yeah, if you, if you don't communicate with people, they don't know what you're trying to do, then you'll never get rid of that dissatisfaction and that disgust. When you read all of the comments online or on various Facebook groups or what have you, I think that there's all this filling in of gaps of, well, I think this is what's happening behind the scenes, or I think this is what's happening behind the scenes. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but we have to, it, but before people are um, making those assumptions, maybe it's better to get in front of it and share and, and be more open about it. Maybe that would be a way forward. Yeah, I agree. For sure. And it's not, that's not something that's really difficult or really expensive or really time consuming to do to have a, a better communication strategy. And in, you know, in fairness, I've gotten more newsletters from EC in the last year than I've probably gotten in the last decade. So it's not like things aren't getting better, but there's still improvement to be made. Well, and, and just on the communication thing, I, I personally don't think that that's rocket science. And that's no offense to anybody whatsoever. Um, he gives us one thing. Like, I, I am not a fan of getting two or three in my inbox the same day from the same. I have issues with that. Um, in Alberta, we have done a, a very good job. I'm going to brag again, but just we know people don't read. Nobody has time. Um, you don't read e newsletters or anything like that. So we've really condensed that. We go, you know, one a month. That's it. There's four things in there. That's it. Um, we have a referral program there where our members can get a free membership if they refer other members. We put a, a little certificate in with their membership card. It says simply put, free membership. So they think they have this free certificate. Um, they flip it over, here's how you get it. Refer 10 people, get a free membership. These people are doing work for us. Like last year alone, we had 890 people use our referral program. So it's simple, it's constant. It doesn't have to be, you know, if we are getting like so much communication, and I'm right, like I agree with you totally because it's like everybody's doing their own little bits and pieces. It is too much right now. Like, but it's not the stuff we need to be putting out. So the stuff we need to put out is, here's the four things we're working on, here's our progress, right? We can be accountable for those things and keep it simple um, because people don't have time these days. They won't read, they never do. So if you give them one little card with a couple things on it, catch their attention or you same constant message, you can get that across. But I think that's what people want because there's such a mess out there and that would show the communication altogether. You know, if there's four items and everything and it's constant, same thing. Here's the things we chose. Here's what we've got done. Here's our success. It's, it's also about recognizing the good work that people Absolutely. are doing. Um, so if everyone is out there doing their little part and doing their piece to move things forward, um, it's important to recognize that good work that's being done and share that. And I think that's part. That is part of it. And people don't have to listen to you know. Even if you did a video a week of someone, you know, what are you doing to advance this goal of MC or I don't know. I, I'm just throwing out ideas, but you, you could do those things. And together, right? Like not 50 million of them, right? Like all different things. And that's where I get lost, yeah. Or do. And I just say, I don't know, but delete, delete, because you don't have time. Sure. So, yeah. As I say, I'm new to this. Maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm sugar I don't know. What I will say is I actually quite like finding a job. I like it, I don't know. But, you know, and I think for me, it's about being positive. You know, we talked a lot about the negativity that we have, but everything is tiny, attainable, tickable targets. You can't train a horse negatively, wherever it is. You can't, if you're a coach and you're negative, you start losing money because people don't come back to you. 
So positivity starts with ourselves, it starts with a belief we can improve, and it's that how are we going to do that? You only had to walk out there at lunchtime, it wasn't alcohol abuse, but everybody was talking. Hopefully we were all listening. We were all, some of us were laughing. There is fun out there. There is a lot of individual positivity in this room. We've got to ask ourselves how every single one of us fits into the next piece of the jigsaw puzzle and how we can link the you know, jigsaw puzzle is, is made up of many, many parts. We're all one small part of that. We all link in to every other part of it. Maybe this is just sort of wafty English rhetoric, I don't know. But it is how do we attach ourselves to other people? How do we move forward in a positive, constructive way? It's the only way it works. It's always nice to end on a positive note. So let me ask if uh, Eva or Tony would like to say anything. Tony? Thank you very much, Victor. And again, thank you for uh, participating in the session. And particular thanks to the, the panel and uh, the positivity that came out of the panel. That was very welcome. Um, there's been a lot of talk about action items, right? Prioritization and action items. And I'm totally in favor of that. You know, I come from the business world, my perspective is, you know, I decide what needs to be done, allocate the resources that are appropriate, needed, and do it. And have then follow up and make sure it gets done and gets done well. You know, it's a pretty simple model, isn't it? Um, obviously, we're not all comfortable with the way the model's working for us. So obviously, that's a priority for us. But um, I want to assure everybody that at the board level, there's a lot of talk about exactly that subject, the need for effective prioritization and to work more closely with the management team, particularly through, obviously through EVA, to make sure that there is an agreement on, top, on, on the top priorities, that our action plans to address uh, opportunities, I like that word better than challenges, problems, lot of opportunities out there and uh, we do talk about it and uh, I'd like to make the comment that there is a, an opportunity for each one of you who attend the general meeting of members uh, on tomorrow morning, I forget what day it is, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, because one of the, um, the things that Eva wants to do with, uh, with the group there is talk about what action items prioritized have been identified and what is going to be done to move the agenda on those priorities forward by when. So uh, be prepared for that. Hope you can be at that session. And thanks again to the uh, to the panel. Really, really good job. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we're all set. Yes. When, is, when is that meeting? Two thirty. Oh, okay. 2.30. Okay. Yes. Uh, can I speak a little bit? You could, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to speak, speak strongly in favor of this course for all of I see lots of problems. <clears throat> me. Maybe I should identify myself. I'm Wayne Burrowash. I'm the president of the Canadian Quarter Horse Association. We have a quarter of the horses in Canada largely operate totally outside of BC uh, and operate just flat. But I see the horse industry as very fragmented. I think there's lots of things that we need to work together on to uh, for everybody's benefit. And like Melanie says on this surveillance thing and that, that's something that affects everybody from the backyard horse through to the high performance equine and uh, so I think we we need this, and I thought, like I, I haven't been really involved in Equine Canada. I do lots of FBI work, but the thing is that we need a unified voice. If the government of Canada look at equestrian Canada as the voice, then we gotta speak for the whole industry. 
And so I personally, and the Canadian Quarter Horse Association, look at this very well and say, finally, we've got an association that is going to include us, and we can move on to positive goals. And so I, I think we got to do this. We, we got to work together. I think, uh, uh, like Tony just said, maybe we got to prioritize what we are going to do. Uh, maybe we can't be all things to all people. I, I, maybe we bit off more than we can chew by having this new vision of one association that can encompass everybody or take care of everybody's needs. And I don't think we can right now. But I'm willing to step back and say, okay, I, I come on board here to think that maybe a large part of the horse industry that operates totally outside of equestrian Canada would finally be included. But I can see by all the discussion today that maybe that's premature, but I would like to look down the road and see that that can happen. And I'm willing to step back and work on this to have it happen so that eventually maybe all those mission things that were read out and the visions and our mandates can truly be fulfilled. Maybe we can't now. But anyhow, I, I think we've got to work together and make this thing go. Otherwise, our industry is going to be totally fragmented again or maybe worse than what it is already. Got to work together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.